Welcome to Toy Poloi. Parental guidance. This video contains scenes of Lego destruction. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Ploy and in today's video we are going to be making a bag and bandolier for a vintage 12 inch Kenner Chewbacca figure. Now this is a fix that uh, people have been asking me for a very long time so I've uh, finally got round to filming it. In recent uh, sort of months I've shown you how to reattach the legs to these uh, broken Chewbacca's and in old videos I've shown you how to reattach the arms to them but without his bag and bandolier he looks a bit naked so uh, let's get straight on and I'll show you how to construct this. Now making Chewbacca's bag and bandolier is a little bit of a complicated project and there's lots of stages to it so I am going to whiz through a few parts uh, but they're all things that I have shown before uh, but the end result really is uh, worth doing so uh, let's crack on with this project. Now before you start this project you'll need to go to toypoloi.com and download this pattern and there's also another file with some images in it. Uh, these will help you make all the elements that are needed for Chewbacca's bag and bandolier. You'll see that there are three main parts. We need to make the bag, we need to make the strap and we need to make the ammo uh, sort of packets that go in the strap that goes over his shoulder. First up we are going to start with the bag and for that you'll need some two millimeter styrene sheet. Now you can buy this from most model shops. I've got a few bits over here so this is two millimeters thick uh, and it's styrene sheets very easy to work with and that is what we're going to use as the basis for the bag so I have a small section here already cut off I have another printout of the bag that you'll see there so what we're going to do is trace this bag onto the styrene sheet and cut that out and that will be the backing to make the bag itself After a little bit of uh, cutting there with some plastic nippers and then uh, just sanding off the edges to make them nice and smooth, we have the basis for our Chewbacca pouch. Uh, and we're going to uh, do the rest of this using some milliput, but milliput is actually quite a heavy substance, so I don't want to put too much on. And to save me sort of mixing up too much, what I'm going to do is actually sort of pad this out just using some off cuts of uh, the styrene sheets. So I've just cut a few bits of styrene here. As you can see I'm going to stick those on just to sort of pad this out because the end pouch needs to be a fairly sort of thick thing. It's about sort of eight to ten millimeters thick at the bottom and um, if we put that much milliput on it's going to get quite heavy. So I'm just going to stick these on using a bit of plastic weld and then we can uh, mix up some milliput and we'll start sculpting the bag on top of this and we'll make something that looks uh, as good as the images that I have here. To turn this basic shape into the final bag I'm going to be using some milliput which is a two part sort of epoxy modelling clay. I've already mixed up a load so you can see that here and I'm going to be using the reference images that you can get to when you download this template. There are, is another file with a load of uh, reference images and I'm just going to be using that to sort of basically sculpt my own version of it on top of this uh, two millimetre styrene sheet. Uh, now there's no sort of, uh, sort of way I can describe how to do this, you just sort of have to do it as you go and, and sort of use your own skills to make something that looks like the images that are on that uh, reference material. I'm not going to be using any sort of amazing tools either to do this, I'm just going to be sort of using my fingers to sculpt mainly. I have a flat headed screwdriver that I'll use to add some detail and I've also got an old biro which I find quite useful because it's got a bit of more of a sort of rounded tip to it and I'll use that as well along with some water just to help me sort of smooth down the edges uh, and it will take me sort of 10 to 15 minutes to sculpt something that looks uh, like what I want. So uh, really I'm just going to get on with it and you can see how I sort of progress through the next of 10-15 minutes. Thank you. 
So there you go, that is uh, my sort of basic attempt at making a replacement pouch for Chewbacca. Uh, now there are going to be people out there who are much better sculptors than me. I'm not sort of professing to be an expert sculptor on this. I can do a job that will sort of give a good enough result for what I'm aiming for. Uh, so I'm sure there are some channels out there that will give you much better tips. But as you can see, with a basic bit of uh, sort of knowledge, I can get something that actually is going to look pretty good. By the time this is all painted up and we put the little sort of fixing on the back and uh, got it on to Chewbacca, this will do a really quite uh, sort of adequate result. Um, I actually have made a couple more of these already off camera which uh, look actually a bit better than this. Doing this with the camera in the way uh, does make it a little bit more difficult but you get the sort of basic idea. You can sculpt the, the middle put on top of the uh, styrene sheet and add a few bits of detail and then once this is all dry it takes about 24 hours to dry. Uh, we can give it a, a sort of undercoat of paint and then we'll paint it up in the, in the right sort of uh, chocolatey type brown colour. I think that will look pretty nice. So uh, while that's drying, we'll get on with making the ammo packs. P -O -Y -P -O -L -L -O -I. For making the little ammo packs, uh, of which there are 16 of them, we are going to again be using some styrene sheet, but this stuff is at one millimeter thick, not the two millimeter thick we used to make the bag. And I put some measurements here to show you what, the size of the little packs that you need to make. They are 14 millimeters by nine millimeters, and they have two little raised sort of lines on them, which you can see are the black lines here. So what we're going to do first is cut uh, a strip that is 14 millimeters wide, and then onto that we are going to score nine millimeter lines lines all the way along this until we have uh, enough for 16 of the pouches and then we're going to stick an extra bit of styrene along those to make these sort of raised lines. Once that's all glued in place we can then cut them but the first thing we've got to do is actually cut this sheet of styrene so we have a uh, 14 millimeter strip so I've already marked that with a pencil you can see that I'm just going to get my little metal ruler here and we'll score along. Now styrene sheet is lovely to work with as I've shown before because it's very easy to cut and it's also very easy to snap if you just score it like this. I'll just do a nice neat score all the way along this line like so. It only takes that to enable me then to actually sort of snap this. You can see it bends very nicely along where we scored and we now have our 14 millimeter strip. And as I say, I'm gonna go along this and I'm going to score every nine millimeters and uh, that will make our little pouches, but I'm not gonna break those. I'm actually just going to score them and then we'll stick some strips along the top and once they're all glued in place, then we can break them. If you want to do each one of these ammo packs individually, it's gonna take a very long time. If we do them all in one go, it'll be much easier. So let me mark off nine millimeter chunks and we'll score all of those and we'll get the ammo packs made. So there we have a strip uh, that is 14 millimeters wide and then there are nine millimeter segments scored. I don't know if you can see that I've scored every single one. I've actually done way more than 18 because I want to do a couple of other things with these. So I've done as many will fit on this uh, sort of length of styrene. But now we need to make a little raised bar. And again, we're going to be using the one millimeter styrene. I'm going to very carefully cut off a strip of this styrene as thin as I can. I'm hoping I can get about a sort of one millimeter thickness. I need two of those. And once I've got those, we can then stick them on. So I'm going to very carefully try and cut this as th sort of thin as I can, one millimeter meter if possible but uh, it might have to be a bit thicker if I can't cut it that thin so uh, let's get that cut and we'll do two of those. So there you go, that's uh, what I've managed to cut off. It's uh, about one millimeter thick, it's gone a little bit curly and uh, bent but that's actually not going to be a problem because we are now going to stick this to the scored side of our sort of previously prepared piece and again I'm just going to use some plastic weld and I think because this has got such a curl to it I'm just going to sort of dab a bit of plastic weld on the end and get the end to stick and I'm using the measurements that I put on my little uh, diagram there PDF diagram as to where I'm going to put these 
So once this end is stuck, which shouldn't take too long, just let that set, I'll stick the other one on. And then I'm going to sort of move along and we'll stick it down and straighten it out as we go. And once that's all done, we can then cut this piece into all this little separate ammo packs. But uh, yeah, for now, I'm just going to stick the ends on and we'll get this started. Another sort of slightly long process, but it should work quite nicely. Now these strips are fully attached we can go about and start separating all of these individual ammo crates and what we need to do is obviously we've got to sort of slightly cut these new bits we've added before we break them otherwise they will just sort of ping off so I'm just going to go down every single score mark that I've marked on the underneath piece of this styrene and just gently cut through the top piece like so we'll work all the way along I'll just do a couple at the end so you can see uh, what I mean is going to happen. So we just uh, score this side as well. And now because we've scored both bits and also cut the top piece, we can just snap these off. So we've ended up with one little individual ammo uh, sort of box there. Just got to do that for all the rest of these. And uh, then we can start sort of tidying them up. They'll need a little bit of sanding just to make them look sort of more finished. Uh, but you can see it's a fairly straightforward job. Much easier to do as one big piece than uh, do all of these individually. It would take an, an incredibly long time to individually stick these pieces on each one. But uh, you can see it's much easier. So I'll just get all these separated and then we can start tidying up these little ammo crates. Now you could just leave these like this uh, with a little sort of rough edges but the original ammo crates actually have a slightly rounded corner and I want to tidy these up a little bit more so I've just got some sandpaper here and I'm going to go around each individual one and sand off the corners just do a little bit of sort of fine tidying up before we go ahead and paint them. Uh, you could probably get away with not doing this because actually by the time these are in the belt they are really quite sort of well hidden you don't see most of them so that would probably do but I want to sort of go that extra sort of little distance and I'm going to do every single one of these so uh, it's going to take me about 20 minutes I would have thought just to get these all tidied up nice and ready and then we can uh, go ahead and paint them. It's now a day later and as you can see I finished sanding off all of these little ammo packs and the milliput on the uh, pouch has had time to dry. I'm actually very happy with that result. It's, a, it's obviously not a sort of perfect match but by the time that is painted that is going to look really quite nice and it's gone nice and solid as well. And it's also got a good weight to it because you want a little bit of weight to it so that it hangs down quite nicely. But uh, before we can paint this now we need to add one final thing which is a little sort of fixing on the back because the way this attaches to the band that goes around you back his shoulder is that uh, there's two holes in that band and you push it over a little stud or oh, that's what's on the original one uh, but so we need to make a little stud there and for that we are going to be using some Lego I have here my little pot of Lego pieces that I show in many of my videos and in this I have this Lego piece which looks to be ideal now I can never remember the exact name of this it's sort of a Lego pin with a tow hook on it I'll put the name on the bottom of the screen here now so you can see exactly what it's called and we are going to use these sort of tow hook part of that. I'm going to get my plastic nippers and we're going to chop off the end of that up to you can see there's a little sort of raised bar section so we just chop that off like so. We should end up with a pretty flat surface and we can now attach that to the back of the bag, uh, let that set and then we can go and paint this. So again to attach this we are going to be using plastic weld because uh, Lego works incredibly well with plastic weld as well as the styrene that we use to make the back of this. That's why the styrene is very useful for doing projects like this. So I'm going to get a bit of plastic weld on a brush. I'm going to paint that onto the back of the Lego piece. I'm going to just put that in place. On the uh, diagram, the PDF file, you'll see there is a sort of a rough guide of where that uh, little latch piece needs to fit. So I'm just sort of copying that. So I put that on. 
it sticks pretty well straight away. I'm going to put a little bit more plastic weld around the edge of it just to make sure that that's firmly in place. And there you go, that will do the job very nicely. Now, all of these pieces need painting and initially I'm going to give them an undercoat. So I'm going to uh, take these outside and use some uh, Tamiya uh, undercoat spray, which gives it sort of a dark grey finish. Uh, and then on top of that, for the ammo packs, I also again have some Tamiya spray paint, which gives a nice sort of uh, sort of mottled silvery effect. Now, the original ones of these were sort of silvery grey, so I think that should look quite nice. So I'm going to spray all of these uh, and then this pouch I will be painting with some humble paints but uh, we need to do the undercoats first so let's get the, that done and then we can actually paint this the correct colour as well. So now everything's come back having had the undercoat done. So you can see here, this is just an undercoat of a plain matte grey. It's actually got a little bit of silver speckles on it because it was uh, sitting next to uh, where I was spraying and I've put the uh, silver paint on these little ammo packs. So you can see those actually look quite nice now. Just a little bit of silver just gives them that extra bit of shine. I've not painted the back of them because uh, it's all going to be hidden when they're put in the belt. So you can see there's just a bit of silver on the top of those, but that does look quite nice. Now we need to give uh, this uh, pouch the proper sort of paint job. I'm going to be using some humble acrylics. I've got uh, three paints here because I want a sort of chocolatey brown type colour, sort of milk chocolate colour. I've got a number 70 here which is quite a nice brown but I'm going to add a little bit of orange which is this RC420 just to make it slightly more sort of vibrant and then a bit of black to darken it down. We'll give that a coat of paint and then on top of that I'm going to put a, a clear coat which is uh, 135 just to sort of uh, complete everything because all of these paints are a matte paint and I want a slightly sort of luster finish and that 135 shall give that. So let's mix up these colours to make a sort of nice chocolatey brown colour and I'll get the uh, pouch painted and we can get that all dried and then uh, go on to making the belt. For the paint to dry we can get on and make the actual bandolier strap. 
Now again on the pattern you'll find these two pieces and what you need to do is cut them out making sure to cut away the grey edge and then stick them together and you'll end up with one long strip with lots of dotted lines on it and that is the basic pattern for the bandolier. Then as far as fabric goes the original bandolier strap was made out of a brown vinyl and I've not been able to find anything in my sort of spares box that actually matches. I've got some brown vinyl that I used for Obi-Wan Kenobi's cape but it's a little bit too sort of orangey so I've actually bought some uh, stuff online now and I didn't buy vinyl because I thought uh, I'd go for something a little bit better and a little bit sort of stronger so I picked up this which is a sort of fake pleather so it's not leather it's plastic leather so you can see it's got a sort of fabric backing but the top of it is a sort of leather effect and I actually quite like this material it's nice and thick and it should give it a good weight if you want to go down the original route then you do need to find a sort of chocolate brown uh, vinyl material but uh, this stuff I think is going to look very nice so I've already made my pattern up and you can see I have stuck it on the edge here I basically put a bit of double sided tape on the back of it and then taken some of the stick off that so that it's not so sticky and you can easily remove it and what we're going to do is now cut this out and everywhere there is a dotted line we also need to uh, get a scalpel and cut through that and then there should be two holes cut at each end but the first thing to do is to cut the long strip off So here we have the sort of whole length of the bandolier strap and you can see at either end I've got two little holes marked. I've just got a knife here and I'm going to very sort of carefully cut a small hole. I'm actually just going to cut a little square. This is where the bag attaches to so you just need to make a little hole. It doesn't need to be perfect it's just something that we can push that piece of Lego through. I'll do the same at the other end just like so. And then all those little ammo cases that we've made need to hook into this belt and to do that we have to cut little sort of grooves along the length of the fabric which is what these dotted lines are and again I've got my knife and I'm going to cut through the fabric at every point where these dotted lines are on the pattern we work our way along to the end and then we can uh, take the guide off but you need to do this all while the guide is in place. Now that that's done we can remove the pattern from the fabric. Now I've got one more step I want to do onto this fabric. Uh, if I was using vinyl I wouldn't need to do it but because this is this sort of fake pleather the back of it is very light and you can see along the edges where we've cut you get a sort of quite a obvious white line. So I've just got a brown uh, sharpie here and I'm going to go along the edge and colour that in so that when it's on the figure you don't actually notice that uh, it's sort of a cut piece of fabric. You can see that makes quite a difference just doing that. So I'm just going to quickly go around the edge of this fabric with this brown sharpie and then we can start putting the ammo packs and the bag on and get it onto Chewbacca. We can now put these ammo packs into the strap and that is what those little cut marks uh, are for. What you've got to do is push the ammo packs through one side of uh, the strap like that and then you've got to push the back and then come through onto the front and you'll see that those ammo packs sit in place really quite nicely and that's what those little strips of plastic were for that we put onto every single one of the packs they hold it in place so I've now got to do this 16 times and insert all of these all the way along the strap.
it's at this point you actually start to feel like you've got something that's going to look like uh, Chewbacca's bandolier. You can see just putting those ammo packs in, it really does start to look the part. So now we can take the bag that we made earlier and this we need to push through the little holes that we've also cut at the bottom of the strap. So you can see that's what the bit of Lego is for. This should, if I've measured it correctly, push over like that very nicely. And we'll do the other one on the other end. Push that over the piece of Lego. And there you go. That is the completed bandolier. Let's get that on Chewy and see what he looks like. So here is Chewy with the bandolier and bag in place. And I'm really very pleased with how that looks. That pleather actually looks uh, remarkably like the one that you see in the movie. It's got a very nice finish to it. I think that probably looks a lot better than the original one that came with the toy. As I don't have an original one to sort of compare it to, I'm just sort of going by the photos I've seen. I think that looks very nice. I can show you a couple of other sort of versions of Chewbacca that I've worked on while making this one. So this was my very first prototype where you can see I didn't have the ammo packs quite sort of finished. I didn't put the bits of plastic plastic strip on them so they're not quite as good and you can see I use some black pleather that I just happen to have in my sort of bag of fabric. That actually doesn't look too bad but it wasn't quite right and my first attempt at sculpting the bag was a little bit too sort of naive and amateur. So that was my very first attempt at Chewbacca's bag, my sort of first prototype. Then we move on to the second attempt that I did which was this one. You can see the actual sculpting of the bag looks a lot better. I possibly not happy with the colour of it, a little bit too dark. And this one you can see I use some vinyl material. Now this is the same vinyl material uh, that I use for making uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi's cape, the three and three quarter inch uh, high figure. But you can see it's really not the right sort of colour. It's a much more sort of orangey brown and the uh, Chewbacca belt should be this more chocolatey brown. And then the one you can see there is the final version. So those are the sort of prototypes that I go through to make something like this. And I'm very pleased with how the final one has come out. This is certainly quite a long-winded project to work on just because there's so many parts to make and making the ammo packs is particularly fiddly and sculpting the bag does take a little bit of sort of practice but you can make something that looks pretty good with not too much effort and even the sort of rough versions that I've made these sort of first attempts here it's not perfect but it actually looks quite nice by the time it's on the figure so don't worry if your sculpting abilities are not great even a sort of rough version can make the figure look a whole lot better. I need to say a massive thank you to Martin Barm and my good friend Uncle He man who very kindly sent in me photos of the original version of uh, this bag and belt so that I could use those as reference material. Without that I wouldn't have been able to make something that looks as good as it does. If you've enjoyed this video then make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell to be notified each time I upload a new video. If you'd like to support Toy Ploy then do check out my Patreon page or check out my YouTube membership page where you can become a member and for both of those you'll get early access to all the restoration videos that I make. And thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Toy Ploy. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Ploy on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram.